everybody, live on Spreecast. My guest today, I haven't spoken to this man in a minute, from the rural Portland and the challenge free agent, Johnny Riley. How are we doing, sir? What's up, what's up, what's up? How's it going? How's it going? It's been a while, good, man. Nice it's talking good, to you, good, to, good to see you back. Good to see, yeah, definitely. Good to, good to see you back on here, man. It's been, like, like I told you before I went live, I've been trying to get some of these Portland kids, some of you guys from Portland on, because I always make you guys... And St. Thomas and then now Explosion will be my priorities to get on first for the challenges. So it's definitely glad to have you on, man. Hell yeah. Thanks, buddy. Took me a while to get on. How's but, everything uh, going, man? Everything's good with me. You know, I uh, just quit my job, my day job, a few weeks ago. So uh, that's new. I'm um, hoping to get a phone call for the next challenge. So this uh, gamble on quitting the uh, job pays off. And then uh, other than that, just fighting and training, pretty much it. Can do, huh? So I want to let all you guys know. If you guys are new on Spreecast, you guys can ask Johnny anything using the question, asking the question button right below. Uh, first question: Noel wants to know. Um, you made a lot of good friends on this challenge, from what I, from what I saw. Um, and Noel wants to know who did you become close with from this uh, free agents cast? Wait, where are you reading these things, Andrew? This question is coming in where? Right above. Oh, okay, right down below. No, it's right, right above, right above me. Oh, who did you become close with the free agents? Oh, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, my closest friends on the cast, free agent cast, was definitely Zach, CT, and Kara. Um, I mean, just for the bare minimum fact that they were from Massachusetts coming into this thing, they kind of just took me under their wings right away and accepted me for who I was before even meeting me, just because I'm from Massachusetts, so I had that going for me. Not to mention, I mean, CT's a seasoned veteran, and Zach's a force to be reckoned with, so it was just great people to, you know, swing the bat with right off the start. Mm -hmm. uh, to add on to that, what was your relationship with, um, like, with uh, your, two port your two Portland roommates? Uh, we'll start with Naya first. How was, how was it seeing Naya again? I bet it was kind of a little bit awkward. Um, I mean... Let bygones be bygones. Uh, I don't really give a shit. I don't look too much into the past. Me and Nia were kosher. You know, we did our thing. We ended up being roommates in the same room in the free agent's house right off the bat. And uh, we respected each other. He said hello. We talked once in a while. I mean, the history is history. You know, we, there was no bad blood still. I mean, I didn't start anything. She didn't start anything. We kind of just went our separate ways to try to play our own game. We didn't have each other's back, but we weren't gunning for each other either. And then... Uh, as for Jessica, um, I still give two shits less about Jessica. Um, she voted me in in free agents. Uh, she would have been one of the first names coming out of my mouth. I still don't. I have no uh, no relationship with Jessica whatsoever. Um, decent girl, good heart, but annoying as shit and the nagging little sister still. And then uh, as for Jordan, Jordan was still one of my best friends. Um, Jordan still is one of my good buddies and still is an alliance. If I'm ever on another one of these things, I'll still have his back. He'll still have mine. Yeah, I was kind of surprised last night on the reunion. We actually found out her, him and Laurel are actually still together, huh? Yeah, good for them. That's what I'm saying. I mean, make it last, make it last. Do what you can. These uh, reality showmances are always pinned to fail. So the more people you prove wrong and the longer you stay together, good for you guys. Were you guys surprised that they were still together? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the showmances, I mean... As many as I know, even myself, I was in one. We did it for a while after, but it seems like they all come to an end sooner or later. So, And uh, just how fast the challenge was, like the challenge moves fast. I mean, you're there either one week, you're there three weeks, you're there seven weeks. It's like you're in and out. So to base a relationship and to get status out of, you know, four or five weeks, because I think Jordan was only there four or five weeks, and then to carry that over into real life, it's uh, it's impressive. I mean, good for them. It's a lot to handle. It's a lot to, you know, go with. But they seem to do it, and they seem to still be into each other. So, good for them. But it's a tough situation to come out of still with a relationship. That's for sure. That's good to hear. Um, I I was kind of, I was very doubtful of it. If if I had to, if I had to pick between them and a, uh, the other couple, which we'll get to, I'm pretty sure later in the precast, um, I would have picked I would have picked Nani Gaha to hand it down. To last, if I would come out of that thing, to last, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, I mean, they're boyfriend and girlfriend now, too, so. Yeah. I guess they did kind of last. Uh, Challenge Podcast wants to know, and I'm going to rephrase this question a little bit. Going into the season, who who did you think was the top male and top female competitor? Um, my opinion for top female competitor out far and wide was Car Maria. Um, that girl had the most drive, hard work, and determination I've ever seen in my life. Uh, when everyone else was drinking and smoking cigarettes or whatever the hell they were doing, she was in the gym with me and Zach, day in and day out. She was doing everything we were doing. Um, that girl trained her ass off. That girl was always working hard, and, and she herself was a force to be reckoned with. Um, I think if she was in that final, she would have kicked Laurel's ass, and uh, Laurel would have had you know, a much harder walk to the final. Uh, good thing for Laurel that her and Cara were friends most of the season until the falling out or whatever the hell happened at the end because to have Cara on your bad side is not a good thing because – Cara's good at this shit, and she's very athletic and very determined. Um, as for the guys, me walking into the house, I saw three guys as as monsters. That was Bananas, obviously, with records and stats and awards and, you know, in challenge lingo. The kid's won the most money. The kid's won the most challenges. He's probably won the most individual challenges, and uh, he's just, I'd say he's the best. And then... CT, CT is a, he's a creature. He's, he's a, an animal, and uh, he's not someone you want on your bad side. He's one person that I saw was a very intimidating. He's got a very intimidating factor about him where it's like you don't want to see that kid in elimination. You do not want to see CT in elimination because you will come out, you won't come out alive. If you come out at all, you're going to be in the hospital. It's just how it is. And uh, same thing with Zach. I mean, Zach is uh, more of like a, a big kid. But he's a Division One athlete. He's the strongest guy in the house. He lifts the most. He runs the fastest. He's the most athletic. Um, but between the three of them, I'd have to say I couldn't right off the bat give someone more of an edge. Those were the three that I was like, I really don't want to piss them off. And then it just so happened that Zach and CT ended up on my side, which worked out very well in my favor. I didn't have to see either one of those animals in an elimination. And me and Banana shot the shit back and forth. You know, we voted me in once into a mock elimination. And... I voted him in twice, and he sent in my friend, sent home my friend. But uh, Bananas, utmost respect for that guy. Uh, he's still, I would say, Hall of Fame number one, Bananas. Oh, hands down. I, I was looking at the challenge money list on uh, Wikipedia. He's actually had 400 some odd grand in money now. Yeah, he's definitely. I would say he's the best. Bananas is the best. He gets it done one way or another. Season in, season out, gets it done. Uh huh. Um. So the biggest theme of this season for you was the luck, the luck of the Irish, the luck of the Irish. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. The three leaf clover, baby. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, challenge podcast wants to know when you were pulling, pulling the cards, what was your strategy? Did you go through first pick or did you think it through? No, I never had a strategy. Um, my strategy was, especially because the, the type of person I am, um, I saw these challenges, and I've seen them in the past, and the way the fans even judge it and the way the castmates judge it is who, who has – hold on there. Who has been – who's got the elimination record? What are these people's elimination record? And I had jack shit. I was a rookie coming into this thing. I didn't see a goddamn elimination round. So I threw myself into that draw every time, and I said, if I'm going to go into this elimination, I'm going to go into this elimination because that's the way you prove yourself in this show. You can win as many challenges as you want. You can be on different teams. You can have different partners. You can perform well. But at the end of the day, I really think you earn your stripes when your life is on the line. Your challenge life is on the line, and you are on the brink of going home. And that's in the elimination rounds. So it's ironic because, yeah, I went to the end. I, I went to the final. I skated my way through. I'm very proud of myself. I'm glad with the game I played. But I didn't see an elimination. So, like, it's like a bittersweet thing where it's almost like, did I deserve it? I don't know. I didn't see an elimination. But I just like to say to myself that I did deserve it. I worked hard. and I worked hard not only in the challenge but in my own life. So it's like, you know, some reward came back. Good, good things happen to good people. But uh, as for the draw itself, I went into every one of those draws. And I remember specifically there was one draw where it was probably like my third or fourth draw maybe or second or third. I don't know. It was right in the, near the beginning, in the middle sort of. And uh, they decided, the other castmates decided to start 
pulling names out of a hat because people were like, oh, I want the first spot. I want to draw the card first. I want to draw the card last. And they started pulling names out of a hat to see who got to go first, second, third, because it, it would increase or reduce your chances. And uh, I remember I went up to – I was in a draw with I think it was Bananas, Leroy, and I want to say CT, and then me. So it's like, I mean, Bananas and CT, they're seasoned veterans. Like I said, Bananas and CT are Hall of Famers. Leroy's been on four or five of these goddamn things. Who am I as a rookie who hasn't seen an elimination yet to come in there and be like, I want to pick first? No, I don't have the right to say that. No way. So I would say wherever you guys want to put me is where I'm going to go. And that's why you see me in every single draw, I'm pretty sure, seven out of seven, I was in 50-50 or worse. The final, the final draw for the, to go to the final, we didn't even know that was a draw. So I ended up getting a shit yeah. spot, and I was facing like a 66% chance of pulling a kill card and somehow I still managed to pull a blank card. So, and then as for the immediate action of pulling a card, it was I'd walk up to the thing, and the first card that I laid my eyes on, I pulled a card. And somehow I escaped through untouched. Mm -hmm. And you, you, definitely, you definitely did it, man, as far as the luck of, luck of, the, luck of the Irish. Yeah, exactly. It was definitely, it was def, definitely a cool scene. Um, going back to that elimination that you were put, put in, uh, were you relieved or a little bit um, bummed that you weren't able to pre prove yourself? And did you have a feeling that they were possibly going to put you back in because of because of it? Um, again, it's a wicked ironic conversation, uh, ironic topic. Uh, bananas, if you watched the reunion last night, Bananas said it the best. The, the point of these challenges is to go into this house and stay the fuck away from elimination rounds. You don't want to be in elimination rounds. You're there to win the money. If you're in the elimination round, you're that much closer to going home. So when I got voted into that elimination round, like I said, I want to prove myself. I want to win a couple elimination rounds. But by all means, if I'm not going to go in, I'm not going to get sent home or risk getting sent home, then yeah, awesome. But at the end of the day, there's still that, that little fly in the back of my head that's like you still have done shit to prove yourself in these elimination rounds, and people will see that. And people did see that, and people do see that. Mm -hmm. See more of these questions. Um, let's talk. Let's let's talk about let's talk about the final. Noel wants to know. Um, it definitely seemed like it was the hardest final. I mean, I've been a fan of these since God, it's been almost a decade and and a year, eleven years now. So um, it, it definitely seemed like it was the hardest final. And Noel wants to know what was the hardest part of that final. Um, I think the hardest part was the transition from the 25-mile bike ride to a couple hours sleep to the hike up the volcano because, first of all, those seats that we had to sit on for the bike were the most uncomfortable thing I've ever had, and we really did have to log 25 miles, which I thought it was just going to be like a, oh, they're just fucking with us for production, we're just gonna, they're just going to put 25 miles on the air, and we're going to do like a mile, we'll be out of this thing in a couple minutes. No, that was not the story at all. We actually had to ride 25 fucking miles. And it was almost like I was sitting on, I don't even know, it was like I was sitting on a, like the corner of a fence post the whole time. And it literally sat up my ass and just wrecked my butt cheeks and my tailbone for an hour, an hour and 20 minutes or whatever it was. And then to go try and sleep for a couple hours with a, a, a friggin' granola bar and a Gatorade and then wake up at 5:30 in the morning and go hike a volcano there was just no nutrients in our body there was there was no oxygen getting to our muscles like Zach had said there was no electrolytes getting to our muscles and it was like a, it was a very draining draining night between that bike ride and then into the next morning where we had to hike that volcano I mean it was probably 10 minutes 10 steps up that volcano and my legs were shot and my legs were Every step was a cramp, 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 cramp. I mean, a couple of those times I had to take my arms and lift my legs and plant my leg into the next slot because it was, it was brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before you answer this question about bananas, like, did they, were you able to know how many miles you logged in? Because, like, normally on exercise bikes, they have the little distance on the thing. Yeah, they had like, a little odometer. Yeah, they had a little odometer on uh, – uh, right behind us, like on the bottom of the thing that we could see because we started looking at him. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Bananas just fucking uh, pulled some Lance Armstrong steroids out of his ass and smoked me. Absolutely smoked me. So good for him. I don't know how fast I could bike 25 miles. 
normally if I do a bike exercise bike, I do like seven miles in thirty minutes. Yeah. Average. But anyways, um, another good question about the final. Uh, Chris wants to know if you had to if you had to pick, how would you set up your partners for the three stages? I would have picked it the way Bananas had it. Plain and simple. Yeah. Bananas had I think Bananas had it set up. Um, first stage, I would have loved to be with Laurel. Um, Nani worked fine in the first stage, but I feel like Nani, uh, Nani kicked ass in the second stage with the run with Zach, whereas, yeah, me and Laurel came in first, but Laurel was slowing me down a little bit. And then as for the third stage, actually, I I'll rewind that. I think Laurel and Nani were interchangeable on the first and second stage. They could have gone either way for me. Yeah. And then the third stage, I would have loved to have one of those two because Devin, that was the longest leg, and Devin was just, she was like carrying that mountain with 100 extra pounds on myself. I mean, it was, it was brutal. It, I, I think that was where I lost the whole thing. Um, just looking at the show last night and looking at the time, the time uh, stamps they had, um, Bananas and Nani beat me and Devin by, I think, like 50 minutes or something or 45 minutes. And that's a huge margin to make up. And that's not, I mean, not to toot my own horn, but that wasn't because of me. That was Devin. That was Devin holding me back the entire way. And, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And I had to go as fast as Devin could go, not as fast as I could go. I got to give you kudos, though. I mean, you definitely seem like you worked very well with her. And uh, was, was she easy to work with, even though she was not the fastest one? Like, did she no, ever complain to you at all? She would complain about, you know, we have to stop, we have to take breaks. And I'd let her do that to an extent. It was, came to a point where I'd say, okay, every time you want a break, we're going to stop, you're going to count to 10, and then we're going to go again as far as you can. And she's not easy to work with at all because – she is going to go at her. You can't force people to do it. Like, you really can't. You can try as hard as you want, and you think you can push people to do it, but you can only push them as far as they want to be pushed. And my, I mean, my strategy is just like, what is me yelling and screaming going to do? Like, I, I literally can't put Devin on my back right now and carry her up this fucking this straight wall, this 90-degree wall. I won't be able to do it. I'll, we'll both end up dying. Like, then we'll, there will be no money if we both die. So I had to do what Devin wanted to do, go at Devin's pace and encourage her and be as nice as possible. But, but in, in my head, you know, I'm throwing rocks at Devin. Like I'm literally, I, I want to push her back down this mountain and just find a new partner. But kudos to Devin. She got through it. Yeah, she's slow as hell, but you got to work with her. You got to be there every step of the way with her because yelling and screaming is not going to get you anywhere. Not at all. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's get to Chris's question. She says, I was extremely impressed with your athletic performance. How did you prepare for this challenge? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I'm just, I'm an athletic person to begin with. So like my day-to-day -day basis is a lot of working out. Um, I box full time. I actually compete in fights. So like my cardio and stamina is through the roof for that anyways. And then, uh, once you once I get the phone call for the challenge, I uh, I stepped it up a little bit in like more cardio, more stamina, and then I switched up my regimen to a little more weightlifting because when I box, I fight at like 160 pounds. Sometimes even one, I drop to like 155, 157. So going out there 160 pounds, and then you end up in an elimination round against a 220 pound Zach, you're going home. I don't give a shit what you're doing, you're going home. And uh, so I, I switch it up a little bit, and I do a little weight training. But I think the biggest thing is mentally being able to tell yourself, I think I can, I think I can, I know I can, I know I can. Because the the mental struggle of these challenges, and even the house itself, living in these houses with these other people, is one of the toughest obstacles to overcome is is the mental the mental stress that you have to go through. And for the final example, like Devin's not athletic. Devin's not any what – physically fit or working out every day, but she pushed herself to do it. So if you have the heart and you have the determination and you get that mentality to be, I know I can, I know I can, you're going to throw yourself to the end. You're going to finish it either way. So I think mentally you got to prepare more than you got to prepare physically. Mm -hmm. 
more stuff about the final. Michael wants to know. Let me scroll up here. Uh, was it surprising seeing Zach's body basically shut down during the final? Um, yeah, it was surprising off the bat just because someone said it. Someone said it. I think it might have been Johnny Mosley on the reunion that it was Zach's, Zach's challenge to lose. Uh, like he was the, you know, the alpha male, the, the tip-top specimen. And uh, everyone kind of saw that. Like even in the last, like Zach had voted in Bananas and Bananas had a chance to go back at Zach on one of the last, I think it was the last elimination before the venue change and decided he opted to go with CT. And people see that as Zach is, you know, he's a threat. He's a huge character. And uh, I even thought that the whole time, you know, even Zach had experience with a long-term final and battle of the seasons. And uh, he kicked ass on that one. He won with a team of four. So to see him start off this final and by leg three just be completely mentally and physically shot was like, damn, what the fuck? Like, what happened to this kid? But – once you look at the circumstances and the food we were getting and the nutrients we were receiving and even the, the electrolytes is huge and something like that. Like you need electrolytes and oxygen to get to your muscles and Zach's 220 pounds of muscle. Now moving 220 pounds of muscle up that volcano is a hell of a lot harder than moving 180 pounds up that, up that volcano. So again, I kudos him. Um, I was stunned to see him die. I was stunned to see his body fail him, but it makes sense when you look at the science of things. Yeah, it was definitely tough to see, but I was I was room for all you guys to finish. I I think it would have been bad bad look on MTV if uh, one of them didn't finish. Yeah, well they pulled that. I don't know if they said it on the show, but they pulled that card where it was because they had heard a few of us like like I think Devin uh, Devin and Chili sitting at the house one day was like, hey, I'm already here. Like I'm in the final. I got 15 grand. Like I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? I don't really care. I'm just going to do this thing, and if I don't finish it, well, I'll take the 15 grand in third place. And then they ended up throwing that card out there being like, if you don't finish, you don't get paid. So it made everyone, all right, well, if you want it, even 15 grand in third place, you have to go finish. Yeah. They, they, I've, I've, heard, I've talked to a whole bunch of people, and they, and they, they say that MT, BMP can do that to you guys yeah. without, war, without warning, and I bet yep. that's crazy. Um, let me see. Media Mogul Man wants to know, um, how do you think you would have finished if it was a four-person final with CT? Where do you think I would have finished? He wants to know what you think. You, how do you if think CT you ran the final with us? Is that what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I would have, I mean, I'd like to say I could go back and take first. I don't think C CT would make a difference in where I placed. CT would be a uh, another massive muscle to move around this, you know, two-day final. Um, I think it still would have been a neck and neck between me and Bananas and CT and Zach would have been battling it out for third and fourth. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, the point where I was thinking in the season that. Um, let me actually ask you this. Uh, when, when did you think in the season where you were like, okay, maybe I got to try to go in a, going to the end? Because, I mean, when, rookies don't go as far. Like, like when, when in the season did you think, okay, maybe, maybe I got a shot at this? Um, when I got my phone call to start, to start training months before the challenge even started. I'm, that, I'm the type of person where it's like I, I didn't come into that house saying I'm here for a good time and I'm here to drink and get shit-faced and have sex. No, I came into that house – for competition and money, first and foremost, friendships and fun and drama, second, third, fourth, fifth. It was competition and money was first and foremost. So when I got that phone call, it was like, all right, I'm going to the end. You can ask anyone from home, my father, my mother, my best friends. I said, all right, I'll see you in seven weeks. It wasn't, well, I might see you in a week. I might see you in a day. I might see you in three weeks. No, I'll see you in seven weeks. You definitely proved yourself. Um, the two moments that stood out to me was um, on that piggyback challenge, the one that you're captain. You were one of a couple. You were one of your five to make it through. And then yep. you won that individual challenge. I mean, pe people didn't take you lightly after that, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's probably when others started realizing. Uh, I mean, people made comments that right off the bat, I mean, even the first challenge, people saw the stamina I had going up the 42 flights of steps when we were all chained together. I mean, people started 
seeing these little things add up like, okay, well, this kid, this kid can pull his own weight and then some, so, you know, watch out for him. But a few of those challenges, especially those two, you said, uh, especially once I won that individual, it was like, all right, well, Riley, something to be reckoned with. You better watch out because he could take it. Oh, definitely. And that, that I, I love that the moment in the that one challenge where Zach freaked out because of the Saran wrap. Was it was that yeah. very uncomfortable? Yeah, that sucked. Yeah. That was like you get claustrophobic, you know. Like I know not everyone's claustrophobic, but they wrap that shit so tight it was hard to breathe. Your stomach couldn't even exhale fully. Your arms couldn't move, and it's just you're very constricted and very uncomfortable. It's just it's like you, you ever had. You, you ever let your foot, not let your foot, but your foot ever get caught up and wrapped in your sheet when you sleep at night and you, you try to get it out so hard and you just can't get your damn foot out and you get so aggravated? I know that's happened to me before and, and that's, this was with your entire body. Your entire body was wrapped up and you couldn't move. Uh-huh. Um, so let's talk about you, Nani, and go ahead and love triangle that we had on the season. Um, <laughs> love triangle. Going in. Going in, Johnny, I actually thought, um, I remember, I believe it was Emily's, Emily's bio that she, that they said that she was going to hook up with a newly single person. And I thought that was going to be you, my friend. Wait, you who said Emily that? Emily Fitzpatrick. Oh, Emily Fitzpatrick. They said it on Emily's, yeah, I thought it was going to be you and Emily Fitzpatrick, but I was kind of surprised to see it was you and Nani. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, Noelle wants to know, was it awkward between you and Kahuta in the house? Um, No. I mean, I never even knew Kahuta knew. Um, as far as I was concerned, I always thought the whole Nani Kahuta thing was a complete joke. The whole marriage thing, the whole dating thing was always a joke. I mean, that's the way it was made out to be when we were around. Um, yeah, they kissed and shit all the time, but Nani kissed like 70% of the house, made out with 70% of the house when girl or guy. So it was like, it still always struck me as a joke. And, uh, from one of the first nights, I mean, Nani had always shown an interest in me and an attraction. And, uh, but like, I, I would always turn it down because one, I had just broken up with Avery and I didn't want to do that to Avery. And so I had said that I'm not going to do anything with anyone. And two, because again, I'm there for the competition. I'm not there for a girl. I'm not there to have any sort of relationship fling with a girl. Like I felt like sleeping with someone would have just brought drama and I uh, bit my own bullet and I ended up you know, it, was a, it wasn't much drama, but it still was enough to be like, oh, what the fuck? And people talked about it, and it became a topic, and it trended in the challenge house. So it was like, that's something I wanted to avoid. And, I, you know, I drowned in myself there. Yeah, um, I had Kahut on earlier in the season. It seemed like he has a very good respect for you because he said that you, you guys talked after the show and you apologized for everything. Uh, what, what is your relationship with uh, uh, Kahut right now? Um, Kahuta's a great guy. Uh, Kahuta is one of those people I have the utmost respect for. He's a straight shooter. He tells you what he wants to say. Even if you don't want to hear it, he's going to tell you how it is. Um, he's a great competitor. He plays a great, great political game. And he's hands down just a good human. Um, I like Kahuta. I have a lot of respect for Kahuta. And uh, I hope to see him in the future. I mean, he's, he's someone I hang out with all, all, any day of the week. You know, shoot the shit with him. He's a great guy. And, uh, yeah, when this whole thing happened, um, like I said, I didn't know that he knew anything about it in the house because we never address it with one another. It was never addressed between my face and his face. It was addressed amongst the house and amongst Nani and Kahuta and others, but it was never Johnny Kahuta. But after the show, he uh, reached out to me and we had a good chat, and I, I just let him know that I was never I was never there to sabotage anything Kahuta had. That wasn't that wasn't my plan, and that's not what it was like. It was. Honestly, it was a drunken, I think Nani said a drunken mistake or whatever it was. Whatever you want to call it, it was a drunken night. And me and Nani were just, I don't know, having fun, whatever you want to call it. Hey, she's a very, she's very attractive, man. So I definitely don't yeah, blame you. she's a very beautiful bit. woman. <laughs> and as far as Kaheta goes, I had him on, I want to say about a good three, four weeks ago. Man, is that dude intelligent. Like, some of the stuff he was saying, I just couldn't help but smile, but smile because the, <laughs> the dude is very articulate. Unlike, unlike a lot of the people on this show, you know? Yeah, absolutely. He's very, very intelligent. Um, I know there's a question about Jordan that I saw in here. Got to talk about Jordan. You, you, guys are, you guys are still boys? You and uh, Jordan Wisely? Yes, me and Jordan Wisely are still boys. 
And um, and Manny wants to know: Do you think Jordan's remark on putting pride before money was smart? Uh, no, I don't think it was smart. Uh, that's Jordan. No, that's Jordan's ego, Jordan's personality. That's not me. Um, I'm like I said again. I go back to that. I was there for money. I wasn't there for my pride. Um, I was there to win money, and Jordan's the type of person that wants to put his pride first and let him do that. But I think it's stupid. I think it was dumb. But, you know, I supported the kid in his decision. I'm the one that put bananas in the elimination for him to do that. So, uh, like I said, I have Jordan's back 100%, but I was still there like, all right, yeah, it's going to be badass when you pull all three cards, but please, when you pull all three cards, please, please, please follow your actions and send bananas home because you're going to look like a fool after. And, well, we all know what happened. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, th I think Kobe back, though, definitely needs to – I feel like he's going to come, come back with redemption on this next one. Yeah. So, um, let me see more questions. Uh, Challenge Podcast wants to know – uh, what format would you like to see in the next challenge? Free agents. Uh, another draw would be great. Uh, would be superb, I'd say. Um, but no, uh, the rumors are supposedly X's. Um, I'm not too thrilled to be with X's. Um, that would pit me with Avery, and I don't want to work with Avery. Um, if I was to see the next format, uh, I don't know. I'd like to see something different, you know. So, like last season, they pulled out that free agent shit. Like that was different, you know. Do something different again. I mean, another room was old versus new. I don't know if they've ever done that before, but that might be pretty cool. Or like even a uh, what if you like threw it out like you know, recess in elementary school. You pick captains and let them pick teams. I mean, that would be even cool. And maybe vets get to pick a rookie. I don't know. I want to see something different. Yeah, me too, but I have a good feeling just because the last real world was Explosion. Have you met any of those kids? No, I haven't met any of those kids. No. Yeah, they're they're all great, all great, great, great kids. I've ta I've had seven out of the 12 on during the season, which was pretty cool. Um, good because, because of real world Explosion, I think it's going to be X's. I hate to say it. Yeah, that. it's a, I mean, that's what everyone's saying. That's the rumors all over the internet, so it could be true, it could not yeah. be true. Who knows, the Buna Mari, I mean, it, you never know. That's a lot of X's made back, to back to back, you know? Yeah, I made that, ca I made a, ca uh, like a fantasy cast yesterday of that, and I, I saw that, of course, I, I did you look on. at that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you think? You think I you think and Avery would have fared well? Huh? Yeah. You think you what and Avery would have fared well with that cast? Um, you think you yeah, and Avery would have done well with that? I think we'd fare fine, absolutely. Um, I know I'll do fine. Uh, I don't know what Avery's up to in her life. I don't know if she's training mentally, physically. I don't know what she's up to. But uh, the girl's got some fight in her. I know that. So she wouldn't be a bad partner. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys would do very well. And uh, the the two that, as far as the couples, I think you guys, if, if, if the all 13 couples are right, which I kind of doubt, but if all 13 couples are right, the two that you'd have to watch out for would be your boy Jordan and Laurel and then uh, your boy Zach as well. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Carissa wants to know, who are you hoping to do a future challenge with that wasn't on this one? Um, it wasn't on this one. I mean, I really don't – I'm trying to think of people. I know I uh, – I like that kid from St. Thomas, Rob. He's pretty cool. At least, I never, again, I never met him. I don't think I've ever met him, but he just, yeah. from social media, seems like a person I'd like. Um, Good dude. I mean, I would say the people I'd want to do it with are the people that I did it with. Like Zach, CT, Bananas, Jordan. Those are the people I'd like to meet. And uh, I already did that. I mean, I hear Emily Strom's a athletic specimen to meet. She'd be pretty cool to meet in person and see her uh, dominate a challenge. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it, I'd say. Like I said, the people I want to do it with, I've already done it with. I like to keep doing it with. Yeah. A lot of, a lot, all, everybody I had on this season was, uh, said that this cast was probably one of the best casts that, that the show's had in a while. Yeah, it was a sweet cast. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you, 
uh, te- play play uh, a lot of pickup basketball games in the house? I tried. I am not a basketball player. I played as much as I could just to get the workout in, get the sprints in, but uh, I'm a terrible basketball player. I'm a short white guy, 5'9", no jump shot. So um, I was picked last for the basketball teams. But I got out there and did my thing while Zach and CT were slam dunking over me. But it's all right. I'll do it again anytime. Yeah, that, I love I love the house. The house is very kick-ass. Yeah, the house a lot is better unreal. Than a lot better than a rivals. Um, Connor wants to know, we'll, we'll get a couple more questions, and then I'll we'll play a little game with you. Um, Connor wants to know, what was your favorite challenge from this season? My favorite challenge from this season was the final. I mean, it's not even a competition. If I can't pick the final, then I'd say maybe the rope challenge. I liked all the physically demanding ones, um, minus the uh, the tunnel buddies or whatever that was called there, the uh, where we had to run and do the balls because I completely got lost on that and screwed that all up with Leroy. But um, I like the physically demanding were ones. Great. For that one. Huh? Your one liners are great for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um Yeah, yeah the physically my brother huh? my, my little brother, he's not as big of a challenge fan as me, but when he whenever he watches it and whenever he sees uh you do the one on one interviews, he he cracks up all the time. He loves it. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh I'm just gonna go with the final. I mean the final was the way I look at it was it's like, all right, we were in Pukan, Chile, to whitewater raft, hike and climb, rock climb, and hike a volcano. Minus the run and minus the bike, those other three legs are things that people go to Pukan, Chile for tourist attractions and pay money to do. And here I am getting paid to do it. So it's just not even a comp- competition in comparison to any other of the challenges I did before that. The best challenge was the final challenge. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely seem like something like it's something like you guys probably won't ever get the chance to do again. Climb a freaking volcano. Exactly. Yeah. So let me get a couple more questions. Um, kind of answered that one. DC wants to know. I'm pretty sure you know who DC is. He does a lot yes, of good stuff with his blog. Um, of the two shows you've done the past year, which one did you enjoy most? The Real World or the Challenge? Oh, my God, the challenge. Again, no comparison, DC. The challenge was different different environment, different atmosphere, hell of a lot more fun, athletic, um, physical, uh, mental struggle, yeah, uh, not as much drama. The challenge in every aspect was better than the real world. I mean, my real world experience was cool, but towards the end of my real world, it really kind of took away a lot of what I took from it. And uh, kind of ruined it a lot for me. And then just the simple fact that me and Avery didn't end up working out kind of ruined my experience because I wasted away a lot of time with her. So uh, the challenge, hands down, was out of this world in comparison to the real world. I'm definitely cool. And I tweeted this a couple weeks ago. I was definitely cool. It was definitely cool to see all three of you guys have seen one final from Port- on Portland. Yeah, badass. Definitely cool to tell. I, I, I love talking to all three of you. You, Jordan, Marlon. Marlon had another album out a couple weeks ago. He's doing he's doing his thing. Do you still keep in touch with uh, JDZ? Uh, well, every once in a while. I haven't talked to him in a while, but uh, I do follow him on Twitter. I see he's doing pretty good with his music thing. So good for him. Hope he keeps doing it and keeps getting done what he wants to get done. He's doing his thing. I'm definitely hoping to see him back on another one. That'd be cool. So let me see. Um, Manny wants to know: Was there anybody that you had that you didn't get along with in the on the show? Jessica. <laughs> um, yeah. per usual, didn't get along with Jessica. Um, I mean, during this during the season, let's say we'll say pre-final, pre-Pukan Chili, um, bananas. I voted in twice. I mean, bananas was someone that. Didn't not get along with, but just had nothing to do with. And uh, he was someone I tried to eliminate. I mean, I wanted to get rid of the best, and it didn't work. But uh, during the the challenge in Uruguay, Montevideo, Uruguay, I tried to get rid of bananas, and um, never worked. But uh, 
I wouldn't say not get along with, but he's definitely someone I gunned for. And then um, mm -hmm. once we got out of Uruguay and into Pucan, Chile, um, I definitely related much more with Bananas. Like you, he, he's the man. He's an intelligent dude, very intellectual, um, an athletic specimen, and like I said, one of the best ever to do these things, if not the best. So him and CT. Mm -hmm. last, last question, then we'll, and then we'll play um, everybody's favorite game, Fuck, Mary Kill, if you don't, <laughs> if you're up for it. <laughs> um, so you won 30, 35 grand, 30, $35,000. Is any, any, any extravagant purchases yet? That you made? Uh, no, I, uh, I took, I'm trying to be smart with it. So um, I gave my father uh, 15000 right off the bat to throw in investors with him. And then um, I paid off some sc uh, school loans, and uh, that's pretty much it. And then I pay my bills. I got a lot of bills. I live by myself and stuff, so I, I do do that whole bill thing. So um, I haven't blown too much money. Um, other than that, the big purchase for me was, you know, investing that 15 grand and paying off some school loans. There you go. I definitely would liked on the reunion last night when Laura was like, I bought these shoes. Yeah. yeah, I didn't find it. I bought a couple pair of shoes, but I didn't think they were, I would have bought shoes anyways. I mean, 30, 35 yeah. grand really isn't, it really isn't life changing. You know, it's not, it's awesome. It's yeah. 35 more thousand dollars than I had before. But like you could, if you're done with it, you can blow through that in uh, an hour, to be honest. So it's like, yeah. you got to play it smart and do something with it. You know, $35,000 isn't a lot of money, but it is a lot of money if you play it right and do something good with it. So. That's what I'm trying to do. Seems like you did. Seems like you did. So let's play the game. Fuck Mary Kill. I'll play I'll play along with you. What I'm gonna do is um I'll have the chat room. Give me three names to give you. Okay. Let's do a chat room. You guys play this a lot in the house? Yeah, they did play this in the house all the time. Yeah. Yeah. First one to come uh bring me down. Oh wow. Let's see. I'll give I'll give you Carissa's. Laurel, Car, Maria, and Naya. Um, kill Naya, fuck Laurel, marry Cara. Yeah. Easy one. That was an easy one. Yeah, I'll give I'll give uh, no no De no Devin well Naya was already used, so let's use this one. This one's a good one. Uh we'll put Nani into the mix. Laurel, Cara, Nani. All right. Uh, kill Laurel. Uh, fuck Nani. Marry Cara. <laughs> uh, Chris, I'm not gonna use that one. <laughs> Why? What you got? Um, um, give, give me. She, <laughs> she, she, she said Avery, Jess, and I. Um, I probably have to kill Avery now. And uh, fuck. <laughs> um. I'm gonna eat the You're I'm gonna eat the grenade on that one. I'm gonna eat the grenade on that one. I'll kill myself. <laughs> All right, give, give me, yeah, give me give me three, and then I'll let people know. give you three. Yeah. Um, someone had a good one up there that I was looking at. Fucking uh, Michael LaRose, Anissa, Jessica, and Laurel. That's a good one. That's tough. That's that's another. Ooh, might have to eat a grenade. Gosh. I mean, you could probably you could probably bang Laurel. I mean, some a lot of people want to bang Jessica, but not me. Anissa? No. God, no. I mean, I don't know. I'd have to kill Anissa, kill Jessica, and fuck Laurel, and then call it quits and run for my life. Uh, what mean, about you, Andrew? What would you do? Anissa, Jessica, Laurel. Anissa, Jessica, Laurel. Uh, and this is a tough one. I think you, I think you got to kill Anissa right off the bat. Probably. You got to kill Anissa. You got to kill Anissa, and then... Most likely. Oh, Jessica might make a good wife. I mean, Jessica probably makes a good wife. So maybe, maybe fuck Laurel. Yeah, maybe right. Jessica makes very, a bad wife. I very Jessica. Yeah, I, t I talk to Jessica every now and then on Twitter. So um, she seems she she seems like she'd be all, all right. Hopefully, uh, I mean, you lived with her, so I pr I I yeah. bet you'd have to take take her in doses. Yeah. See, I'm just I'm biased. You know, I have experience with the girl. It's a biased opinion. It's hard to change, but. I can see why people like Jessica. She's a beautiful girl too, you know. So Jessica's Jessica. Mm -hmm. And I fuck Laurel <laughs> out of those. Things. There you go. 
Yeah, if, yeah. If I had to pick anybody, I the first one I'd I'd fuck would be Teresa. I've talked to her a couple of weeks, and she's gorgeous. Good choice. Good choice. Uh-huh. I definitely appreciate you coming on, man. It's definitely. Uh, what, what do you have going on in the next couple months, man? Anything exciting? Um, just like I said, I quit my job. But uh, other than that, I got a couple fights, boxing matches. That's pretty much in the limelight right now. So that's what I'm going with. Training every day and uh, waiting. My next match is uh, a week from Saturday. If anyone's from Massachusetts, the Brockton Fair, come out and support me. And uh, other than that, just in the gym, hope, hoping to get that next phone call because, like I said, I took that gamble of quitting my job. But I didn't want to be a cook anymore anyways. So I'm going to get my EMT license and get on that firefighter track. Other than that, Another day, another doll, living life. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was, uh, I actually went on vacation a couple, like about a month ago to Washington. I was hoping we were going to drive because I was going to stop by your old stopping grounds, Pizza Smisa. Hell yeah. Maybe next year, though. Pizza yeah. Smisa is delicious. Yeah, I bet. So, um, I definitely, definitely appreciate you for, you for coming, coming back, and we'll definitely have to talk real soon, man. Definitely, glad definitely to, Andrew. Glad to, glad to see you doing well, man. You guys Thanks, can buddy. follow us at CC with Kurt, at Johnny Riley. I think I got it right, yeah? Um, I always have to ask Jess to be, yes to be safe. No, it's at Johnny Riley underscore one Y. Two N's, one Y. And then an underscore at the end. Let me try it again. G-N-Y. No worries, brother. Don't even worry about it. Go follow that guy right there. Go follow that Johnny Riley. He probably needs some followers. <laughs> there we go, this one. I'll put I'll put DC Johnny Riley. So appreciate it, man. Definitely, definitely glad to see see you came out came out with with some money. Was hoping for the W, but hey, you're in you're in with the the challenge legend. So yeah, no, yeah nothing to be ashamed of, my friend. I'll be back. Watch out for me. All right, man. Thanks thanks for coming on. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, thanks everybody. Thanks, Have man. a good one. Thanks for the support. Thanks for watching the season. Take care, Andrew. Alrighty.